William, I am going to comment on this. Uh, it's no problem commenting on this. I'm going to read the question and comment on it. Did I get? Let me just make sure I'm where I need to be. Okay. William, and then, yeah, there's another six to eight questions. Don't worry. We're going to get to them all. Uh, and there's a six bull put. So I've got William, and then I've got, I'm going to pronounce this wrong, Kaushik. Kaushik. Okay. All right. So, um, William says, Mike, regarding your two-week bull strategy and scan, have you tested or traded a two-week out bear call strategy? I did, and I tried to just reverse the price. I said, do you just reverse the technical parameters? It would seem that would be ample opportunities to execute this strategy as there seems to be sectors and stocks that are out of favor, as well as stocks that move down faster, so I'd appreciate your thoughts and comments. The best thoughts and comments I can give on that, William, is that I tested multiple ranges of bear call credit spreads just as I did with bull put credit spreads, okay? And with the simplicity of even just reversing the criteria, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. If I'm in bull puts and I saw the best criteria that worked for me in variable testing was looking for that certain MACD range with that certain probability, reverse the MACD. Look for stocks that are declining with the MACD, that are in a downtrend, and have the same 85% probability. That makes sense, doesn't it? It should work exactly the same. The bear call should be just as successful. It does not work that way, William, and I will try to point you to the webinar where I have a better discussion on this. won't get time to do it today because I want to get to these other questions that came in. 1 slash 2 slash 2018 to... 12 slash 31 slash 2018. Okay, draw chart. All right, so this is for SPY. One of the webinars I did last a year ago, I did it in 2019. I might have done it at the end of 2018. I can't, I think it was the credit spreads beyond the basics part one. It's in the archives on power options. It's also on YouTube. I think that's the one. But I showed the results of what had happened. So remember 2018, remember this topic we've been having where I've been throwing out this number of in the past three years or so, we've had 12 to 15 what I call black swan events. That's the first one. That's that February 5th through 8th IELTS reference of 2018. There was another one from March 21st or 26th to April 5th. Then there's another one here in July. If I'm not mistaken, the next one happened in August. We had a nice good run. This was August 5th, this decline happened. And then we had that horrendous October, tried to come back, and then that disastrous December. So one, we could even almost count it as two, definitely three, four, nah, five, six. I think the way I counted it out, six out of the 12 months of 2018 were negative markets from day one to day 30, 50% of the time. Now, I, I mentioned I closed my bull puts here at a 50% loss. I followed the course. With trading these, I stayed out until it was time to get back in. But through the bull put credit spreads, before that October 3rd, October 4th drop, shoot, 28, the bull put credit spreads were up 28%. Okay, they were up by more than that. But what I mean is if I took, you know, a $100,000 account and only allocated $20,000 to it, the value of the profit, the total was 48000 but the value of the profit of the $20,000 allocated to bull puts up until this point, even with these declines, was 28000 Okay, so you could say that it made 106%, 108%, but it was 28%, and this is the reason why. Because at one point, this was a 50% loss of what I had invested. Those three positions were closed for an average of 49.5% loss on that first day of fall. Why am I going through all this? Because taking the bear call credit, okay, sorry, and then if I kept trading afterwards through 2018, this still ended up being a 9% profit, meaning a profit of $9,000 even through all of this. I didn't. I stopped trading here with the bull puts. I didn't trade in November. You could have actually made a lot of profit. And what are we looking for? Positive MACD, 85% probability. Naturally, the market trend as a whole was down from the peak was down from this peak. It was down, so you'd expect bear calls would have worked great. Taking that same probability of 85% or greater, 14 days out in time, two-point spreads or more, William, 85% probability, and looking for a negative MACD and trading in a downtrend, the bear calls were down 24%. They were lost. 
Why? Because this happened in three days. This happened in a month. This happened in four days. This happened over three weeks. This happened over a month. This is two months. This was three and a half months. This was one month. This was positive, bullish, where the bears actually lost. And the bears actually won. Okay? So in reality, bear calls only won here, 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 and in this three-day and in this four-day period. That's it. All the rest of it, this was losing bear call credit spreads, even with the 85% probability and management does not work out the same because when you have a prolonged bear when you have a bear market, it is not prolonged. When you have a stable to bullish market, it's prolonged and you could have multiple cycles of victories. Uh, Brent made a comment. I don't know if I missed your previous comment, Brent, if you had one, but you had said indexes, NDX, SPX, and RUT. Yes, on power options, you can search for positions via the indexes. Um, you can look for positions for iron condors. I think that's what you're asking about. You're asking about iron condors. Um, so yeah, if you're looking for iron condor positions, for some reason, Brent, that sticks out of my mind that you asked about iron condors. I think it accidentally got deleted when we were, I was clearing out some of the other answers. But Brent, we have a specific, I'm sorry, we have a specific screen here. If you go to power options, you go to iron condors, there's a sample search already structured for you to look for index and ETF iron condors as well. And of course, is that too many results? Yeah. So let me just isolate this a little bit better. Okay, so you can use that as a default. And I'll, I'll clean up these defaults a little bit more uh, for you. 81. Uh, short put 85. Short call 85. Okay, so let's get that in there. In any case, ah, there's no way. Oh, that's why. Yeah, you can do it by weeklies or you can do it by monthly, whatever your preference is. Okay. So, but uh, one thing I want to show you when the results come up, there you go, I'll just do this. There we go, okay. The one thing I wanted to mention to you is if you're trying to create a search from scratch, or if you're trying to use the list function, you're creating a list, Brent, to search for the positions, um, oh, one week or weeks out for expirations. Depends what your trading goals are. Okay, so here I did a 14 day out trade for Iron condors, or even credit spreads, Brent, with a good probability. I'm looking for a probability between above 85%. Uh, you see some here in the 90s, but look at the returns, 9%, 11%. That's not bad for a 14-day trade. Um, but with a standard bull put credit spread or iron condor in a more volatile stock, you can find positions that might have an 85, 88, 90% probability that are offering a 14, 15, 17% return as opposed to half of that. That's what you give up. What I would prefer to see is probably going out two weeks, even on the two weeks or more, even on the indexes and ETFs, Brent. And the reason why is I think the net premium, the net credit for a one week out trade iron condor, which may require a high monetary requirement based on the strike differences. Here we're about a 10 point strike difference and we're getting 68 cents. If you go, this is two weeks out. If I go one week, it won't be half that, but it might only be 40 cents, 38 cents. It's kind of a, a small premium uh, for that, that large gain. I think it's better to use the two-week out because you can also go further out of the money. So here's a 1280 and a 1605 short. Let's look at the profit and loss chart for this Russell trade. Uh, Brent, that would be a lot easier to analyze as far as the range. And we had this. Let me just tighten this up a little bit here. So the scrub, I'm using the scrubber down here to sort of give us a better view. Okay. So here we are, 1476 roughly, and I got 1280 selling the put, 1605 selling the call. Okay, so good range out of the money on both. Now, if I do the one week out instead of the two week out to get the 85% probability and probably cut this down to a four or maybe a 3% return, maybe not half, but I'm going to be closer, aren't I? I'm probably going to have to be at 1400 and 1550 for an iron condor with a lower potential return. And that's because I can't go as far out of the money and still receive a reasonable return going shorter time frame. 
Okay, if I use these strikes, it would be probably a two cent net credit, and that's not what we want at all. That might be an exaggeration, but it might be close as well. Okay, so if I'm doing any kind of spread or iron condor on the indexes or ETFs, I still, especially the lower volatile ones, I prefer to go at least two weeks out in time. Okay, and that reason I know I'm getting at least a decent premium. You saw there on the results for the search um, that, that I tweaked it. Remind me, let me jot that note down too. I got to tweak that sample search. There's just too many positions with all the, uh, what was killing that search, why it was coming up and telling me that there was more than 600 results. And that's why it's telling me to filter it down a little bit more, even on our own sample search is because I actually haven't checked those criteria since SPX started offering the Monday, Wednesday, and Friday series. So for every week, there's probably 70 spreads on SPX that might match that criteria I initially had in there. And it was looking five to 45 days out in time. So you can imagine the number of SPX trades alone that were dominating that list with the Monday, Wednesday, and Friday expiration. And SPY as well, uh, because we had that in there also. Okay. Um, in that case. Um, so yes, that's, that's what you probably want to look for. And it's easy to set up. I'll change that sample search for you over the weekend um, to get better results. And I just wanted to point out to you, remember, if you're looking by a search by symbol or you're creating your stock list to just screen against those five stocks there, Brent, on power options, the indexes are preceded by a dollar sign. So you have dollar sign RUT, dollar sign NDX, dollar sign SPX, and more. Okay? That's what I would look for in that case. Um, and I just by looking at the numbers right now, uh, that's what I, I that's why I would look one week out, two weeks out as well. Okay, all right. So I'm going to jump ahead now. It, I'm calling it jumping ahead, but it's really not. It is an order from 15 minutes ago. Uh, I'm going to take Wesley's question and I'm going to throw the comments that Sam put in there as well. All right. Um, real quick before I get to Wesley, this is William again. Okay. Uh, William says, Michael, regarding a delta ratio that you explained for calendar call spreads, and we've been talking a lot about debit spreads, well, really credit spreads and debit spreads, do you have preferred delta ratio rules for call debits and covered call trades? No. Let me explain that. Okay. Um, I do not look at delta for my bull put credit spreads at all. The other criteria are more important. I don't look at delta ratio for debit spreads. It depends on, and I don't, period. Not if I'm going to do an in-the-money debit spread as a parity to the bull put, I've already identified the bull put I want to use, William, and I look at the parity on the spread chain tool for the debit spread that has the same probability, okay? So I'm not looking at delta at all. I'm using probability, not delta is what I'm answering. Regarding the covered call, I don't have a specific delta I look for because I don't trade covered calls. I only trade standard collars or married puts if I'm buying the stock position. I don't do just covered calls anymore. But we've had many discussions that we've had in the past have been related to, let me get something simple. Of course, it's going to be one of my stocks, but let's let's do a good one. Let's do HDS. That's easy. Why I should have used Fabernet, but this is pretty easy. Good wide strike ranges. The power options chain shows you the important factors for covered call trading. Percent if assigned, percent downside protection, ignore the naked yield I have there, okay? And there's three approaches to the covered call trade in this case. I don't, I don't look at delta myself. That, that's not to say there's nothing wrong with looking at delta. I'm just saying that I don't. And the reason why is because depending on the stock and depending on what trader you are, if you're in the money, you're looking at whatever strike in the money is going to offer you the percent return if a sign that you want with the downside protection you want, which I think is more important than screening for delta, and the probability you want, which counts to delta. So if I want to look for positions that have a 75% probability of a sign while at least earning a 1% return for a 20 or 25 day trade with having at least a 9% downside protection, this is the trade, I, this is the covered call I would select. I could reverse it though. And I could say instead of a 75% probability above, I'm looking for a delta of at least 0.75. That's if I want to be in the money, hoping to get a sign, take the return, and move on to the next position, not thinking about rolling or continuously managing the position at all, William. On that note, if you're looking out of the money because you think you're speculating on the market, you're looking for good stocks, and you think the stocks are going to move up, 
but you still have a requirement where you want to collect at least a 2% or 1%, I should say 2% premium against the stock price, you're still getting at least a 2% downside protection, but you want to be at least 4 or 5% out of the money. Well, naturally, I'm taking the out of the money strike here at 3750 which I think I sold on my married put position, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but again, I could just say delta of 0.35. There's nothing wrong with using delta. I just don't. I focus on probability based on my expectations. More importantly, for covered calls and debit spreads, I'm focused on premium return against position, max return, and probability, as opposed to following a strict delta. And there's other webinars where we've talked about it. And you know, someone says, "Why don't you ever use delta?" And okay, here's the here's the main reason. In the married put screen, but I could demonstrate this with any other search as well. But in the married put screen, when I pull this up, you know, it only gives me, it gives me 33 results. And I know that I'm looking for positions that are between a risk of three and a half, nine percent, uh, not go, going at least 150 days out in time. And I might change that to a risk of only seven or eight percent, so on and so forth. You say, oh, why aren't you screening with Delta? It's because I don't have to. Why am I not looking at Delta in the default covered call searches? Because I don't have to because all of these criteria William work hand in hand, okay? And so what I mean by that is without even screening by delta, theta, or gamma, and I could do this on the bull put screen as well, what are my deltas? They're between 0.5 and 0.65. It's a pretty restricted screen, but matching the risk, which I'm more focused on, matching the, the stock criteria, I know that all those deltas are going to be a specific range without me even doing it. I know all the deltas, the short put deltas for my bull put spread are all going to be in that same range of say 0.18 to maybe 0.1 without even using delta. The probability and the other requirements and the return work hand in hand. They're doing all that for me without even using the Greeks. So whenever I hear one of those uh, options webinars or an options uh, educator say, oh, you can't trade options unless you know the Greeks. Actually, you can, as long as you're using other criteria that also use the Greeks that I have found customers find it easier to understand the idea actually of probability and time frame and extrinsic value in the at the money bell curve as opposed to saying delta, theta, gamma, vega. Okay, so you can be successful without knowing the Greeks, but in some strategies you can't. In other words, in the calendar spread, I absolutely have to know my delta ratio in my opinion. I have to know the implied volatility ratio, how it's working for me and how it's working against me. Don't get me wrong. I am not saying that the Greeks are not important. I'm saying you don't necessarily need them. Now, this allows me to jump into a quick conversation here Wesley, uh, for Wesley. I'm sorry. Now that we're talking about criteria and more, and Wesley says, how do I set the technicals to find volume jumped out from average recently and break out from a channel? Breakout price and volume. Thanks. All right. Simple, simple. Not really, but it is. Let's just do a long call search. It's advanced concepts, but I'm going to show you how to do it. Okay. Now, there's two things that you mentioned here, Wesley, and I'm not sure which one you mean, but I'm going to show you how to do both. Okay. So let me clear out the filters. We're going to do a long call search just for standard August expiration, 28 days away. But I only want to see positions. Uh, I'm going to isolate it just to add the money options to save time for the screen. That's not saying that the calls are better, but you're looking for positions that have jumped in volume. Now, you might mean options. You might mean the stock. Okay, so if I'm talking about options, I'm using the percent current option volume filter. This shows me the total option volume today, or you can actually use yesterday's with the previous option volume. The total option volume today across all strikes and all expirations compared to the average volume over the last 30, I don't know, 90 days, I believe. I'm sorry. No, it's the last 30 days. Excellent. So you'll see this in most single option searches and in most searches, Wesley. I'll just put in a percent current option volume of greater than 200%. Only those positions that have doubled, that today doubled their average stock volume over the last 30 days. I'm, I'm going to put in at least 100 volume today and an open interest of at least 500. Why not? That's just for the restrictions. You don't need that for what you're doing. But that's how you would look at the percent current option volume for a jump in volume across all expirations and all strikes where real activity is going into a stock. People are picking different strikes and different things compared to the average of the last 30 days. 
Now, if you're looking for a stock that's jumped, we've got that percent stock volume feature for you. That's in the technicals on every search. Again, this is compared to the 90-day average. So if I want to see positions um, that have moved up, had volume 50% higher than the average over the last 90 days, put an average stock volume of 150. Now, while we're here in the, this field, while we're here in the technicals field, I forgot the name for a second. You can tell it's after 6 o'clock right now. The percent Bollinger Band is what Ernie uses to identify his ranges, a breakout. A Bollinger Band breakout that's breaking outside of its channel and outside of his trend, he typically looks for a Bollinger Band where the stock is closed above the upper band one day and then the next day. So what am I typically looking for? I'm looking for a percent Bollinger Band range maybe greater than 100. The upper band is 100, the lower band is zero. So looking for a breakout, I'm looking for anything that's above 100. You know what might come up in this search? Probably GLD. We saw that. It was about 110% above, 10% above uh, the upper Bollinger Band. Okay, but that's the filter that we'd use. I might not find anything, but, oh, there we go. Well, it's not at the top of the list. I'm surprised. I thought I was expecting GLD to match those two. You've got AMD. That makes sense. Hitting new highs today. ECOM, Yamana Gold is up there. Endeavor, Calix, uh, Sogo, uh, Mara, Arnett. Uh, what's on page two? I guess the GLD volume, option volume wasn't as high today, even though the, the, the Bollinger Band. Okay. So let's just take a, I don't take the first one. What am I talking about with that percent BB20, which is reflecting the upper and lower Bollinger Band? This is it. Okay. So it closed above the upper band. That's terrible. Let me, sorry, folks. Let me scroll down for you. That's a little better. Let me go one month, actually. Now, I don't know if this, this jump, now, one thing I don't know here, Wesley, is if in this criteria, it's above, it, it's had this jump here the other day because of earnings. That's something you have to consider. But what did we have? We had a Bollinger Band breakout out of the channel, didn't we? Actually, it started here, closed above the upper Bollinger Band, and then the second day, and that's usually what Ernie looks for as a potential. And then sometimes you see him pull back, but then continue up. I'm not saying Calix is going to continue to do that. I'm not making a recommendation or suggestion, but that's the search criteria that we'd look for in that case. Now, where are we down here? Do I have my RSI? I do. It's up at 80, but pulling back. That makes sense based on the chart. But you have that great positive MACD. You have this one. This would have been, this probably would have been my trigger to enter it. Positive MACD above the SMA 20 and just closed above the upper Bollinger Band. That might have matched one of my screens and kind of the Ernie uses as well. But that's what you want to look for. You've got the percent current option volume, the percent stock volume, and the percent BB20 showing you where the stock price is in relation to that upper and lower Bollinger Band. If you're looking for the downside, you'd look for this less than zero. Okay, if you're looking for puts, you'd look for it less than zero to show Bollinger Band breakout to the downside in a downtrending move. Uh, stock below the SMA20 and a negative MACD probably is what you might look for there as well. Um, and interesting, this was not related to the, uh, the con this conversation, but Sam had mentioned this around the same time Wesley did. He says, got to see support and resistance and do the trade and support. He's talking about the Apple position. And Sam commented also, another technical you might consider, so when I bought Apple stock below 20 RSI, I always made money. It works and it's simple. So there's something that Sam has been doing there related to the RSI. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, what you, you uh, Wesley said, thank you. Is it possible to find a day after it breaks out? Absolutely. Okay, so if I ran this, I guarantee you, if I ran this same search, uh, let's go back to Calix. If I ran this same search that I just did, I don't know if the option volume would have matched. That, that's the difficult one. And if the volume was increasing, let's take a look. Where's my volume? There we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yep. If I ran the search, okay, no. If I took out the stock volume percentage I was looking for, and maybe the option volume, it will sort of sh it would have shown me this Bollinger Band breakout. Absolutely. It would have shown me this uh, because right here, it's I'll clear that up for you, Wesley. I'm sorry. Right here, that's at a, this, this closed at 100%, maybe 99. This is probably 103. This is probably still around 101, 102. This was probably 120. This was probably 125, 130, and this might have been back down to 110 as a re the bulk percent BB20. These would have come up, but as you can see down here, the corresponding days, 
the volume, I don't know if it was really 200% or a full 100% above the average over the last 30 days. This was. So combining the two together, you might see Bollinger Band breakouts, Wesley, without the increase in stock volume. Okay? That's a potential. Okay, but, but so you got to take hand in hand. Is it more important for you to find the volume for the option of the stock? Is it more important for you to find uh, the Bollinger Band breakout? You can have multiple searches, one just for Bollinger Band, one just for volume, and then a third search that includes both. You'll be set to go. All right? So that's how you can use those technicals. That's how Ernie uses the technicals. I'll clear those drawings. And that's even in, I could have used it as a default, but I thought it was going to be faster just to clear everything out and show the four criteria we wanted to talk about the default Bollinger Band screen. Oh, look, same docs pretty much. Calyx AG GFI, Katos AMD, Humana Gold's not in here, but what is this? This is Ernie's default screen where he's looking for stocks above their 60% uh, of 52-week range Bollinger Band greater than 95 in an uptrend and also has to match other basic criteria, but this one's not looking for volume. That default's looking for Bollinger Band breakouts only and it's almost identical to the list we just created on the fly with the increase in option volume and the Bollinger Bands greater than 100. Um, so why are, why are we not seeing a manacle? It might be on another page. There's 48 results here. I think we land 24 or something. Um, but it could be related to the stock price and the um, previous option volume. Okay, he's using a previous option volume, not the current. But it's a starting point that you can use, Wesley, taking a look at the Bollinger Band default screen on long calls. There's also one on long puts looking for that lower range of the Bollinger Bands as well. Reminder that today's material are my thoughts and your questions designed for educational purposes, increasing investing performance and options knowledge. Any stocks or options discussed today should not be taken as direct trading suggestions. Options do involve risk as we saw with some of the positions today and may not be suitable for all investors. Now, if you like some of the tools that we saw, the ability to create a high volume Bollinger Band breakout search in any strategy, looking for high probability, uh, looking for high premium. That's all available in the various strategies that we support on Power Options. You can test it out for free. Just go to PowerOp.com, put in your name and email address, and you'll have full access to the tools for 14 days. After 14 days, subscriptions cost only start at only $45 per month for the end of day data, but you can upgrade to the 20 minute delayed data at $65 per month. And we offer the full back testing services on top of uh, the 20 minute delayed service for only $35 more. It's $100 for the delayed service plus full access to the back test. And of course, we have a real time service as well. Now, we shared the link earlier to powerop.com slash webinars.asp in discussion to managing that uh, long option that was uh, moving against us. And uh, of course, you can go to the webinars page at any time. Also, you can check out all of our archive videos, our thousands, the thousands. I think I'm only up to maybe 900. I'll have to check that. But hundreds of videos on YouTube related to options investing over the last several years. You can just go to youtube.com slash power or search for power options on YouTube. Once you're on the power options, you can put in a search for bull put, long call, buy call, call trading. And, and you'll see a bunch of results there that match that. Of course, you can also check out the blog at any time as well. Well, thank you all for joining me today. Thank you all for the great questions. And of course, the spirited discussion as always. Uh, if you do think of any questions later on, questions about the material we talked about today or questions about any other topic you forgot to bring up or think of later, just send me an email to support, support at powerop.com. Or you can reach us at support at radioactivetrading.com. You can also call us during market hours at 302-992-7971. And remember, your trial members and subscribers can schedule a coaching session at any time. That's essentially a 35 to 45 minute phone conversation with myself or Ernie. We'll walk you through the tools on the site, answer any questions that you had. Um, similar to how we interact here, just not usually on the screen, unless you want us, you ask ahead of time that you want to set up a GoToMeeting um, format so that you can see my screen or you can share the screen. Otherwise, it's just handled over the phone while you're navigating as well. Let's see here. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you once again. Everyone have a fantastic weekend and have a happy trading week next week, I hope. Uh, Vin, you have a great weekend as well. Thank you very much. Uh, William says, uh, thanks, Michael. Enjoy your weekend. Absolutely, William. I look forward to it. I hope you have a great weekend too. And Sam, uh, thank you for your questions and your comments related to the RSI and related to your uh, bull put management there. I hope you have a great weekend as well and enjoy the rest of the evening. Take care, everyone. We'll see you soon 
I'll get the archives out as quick as possible. We'll, you know where we'll be next week as well, Friday at 4.30. Take care, everyone. Good night.